الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد فنصدق الكتاب فنصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدى هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة كل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله we'll talk uh, about the book which is called Hiqba Min Al-Tariq Some uh, people ask me what is this book Okay, maybe Hiqba Min Al-Tariq This book written by Sheikh Uthman Al-Khamis And this book doesn't talk about, about the seerah as a whole or the history of the Muslim Ummah during the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi or during the time of the companions. This book talks about certain events in the uh, life of the comp- companions, not the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi certain uh, topics. Who is the Khalifa after Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Who is the Khalifa? Or how how did Umar uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala choose that? Uh, Khalifa, uh, how did you choose Abu Bakr, the Khalifa after him, and also how Uthman radiallahu ta'ala became the Khalifa of the Muslim uh, Ummah. Then the battle which is called the Jamal, and the battle which is called Safin, uh, also the battle which is called the Nahrawan, Okay, Al Jamal, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and uh, the other side, Talha, uh, Zubair, and Aisha, uh, Sufin, uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and the other side, Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an, uh, Nahrawan, Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, and the Khawarij. But he gave very important introduction. For this topic, it is very important to have. Like this introduction. طيب. Last week we, we mentioned that we should follow the authentic hadith only. We should follow the authentic hadith only. So many people say, if I take only the authentic hadith, then I will miss a lot of information. And then the Sheikh said about this question, he said, no. We will not lose a lot of information. Alhamdulillah, in our books, there are a lot of authentic chains for the uh, information. And if we don't find the authentic chain for one for some information, uh, we have the general principle. For, yeah, for, for example, um, there is a story uh, or there is hadith, there is uh, something narrated in the books of history uh, about the, the problem happened at the time of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. And we have, for example, one, only one narration about certain incident. Okay, then it is not authentic. So some people say, okay, if it is not authentic and we don't have any authentic hadith related to this incident, we say we should not, we should, we should not use the a uh, weak hadith okay we have the general principle that all the companions are good people and the generation of the companions are the best okay so this is very uh, very important radiyallahu ta'ala an sheikh then said sheikh uh, uthman said and every narration has uh, accusation to any one of the companions Number one, we have to make sure about the chain. If the chain is authentic, then we have to check what is the exact meaning of this narration. We should not explain the hadith according to our uh, desire. We need to find the correct explanation of the hadith. And if the chain is not authentic, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We should trust the companions, radiallahu ta'ala, and all of them. And, and we should believe that all of them are just radiyallahu ta'ala and whom ajma'in. He mentions a very important point that that many people, many people like to read the books which 
write the history in a nice way. They said, Wallahi, I, I bought a very nice book. I read last night half of the book. It is very interesting uh, way. Okay. Uh, the problem, some people, they, they like how the author introduces his su uh, subject. This is not enough. You have to make sure about the authenticity of the information. And he gave some examples. He said, like the books of uh, an author called Abbas al Aqad. And uh, there is another author called Khalid Muhammad Khalid, and I think Khalid Muhammad Khalid is translated. The books of Sira uh, by Khalid Muhammad Khalid translated. Taha Hussein, okay, he said, and be careful when you read like these books, the information not authentic in these books. So they say, the, and he said, like these books, when they write, their main concern is how to write the story. And you know, if those people who, li who, 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 who write stories, they like to make the story complete. And sometimes they, need, they feel that they, I need to add something here. Or this information is very nice, this should be added. And they don't care about this information, if it is authentic uh, or not. The main thing is their book should be nice, should be introduced in a nice way, and to be famous among people. And also he mentioned yeah, any other books uh, that uh, people should uh, be aware of them. They should avoid them. Yeah, for example, Al-Aghani, Abil Faraj, Al-Asfahani. Then the next point, he said, why should we read the history? Why should we read? Uh, from where should we read the history? He said, if you are... Uh, a man or a woman who has knowledge in the to, how to know this chain is authentic or not. If you remember, last, the last maybe three months we spoke about the science of hadith, how to may, how to know this uh, chain is authentic or not. So, if you are specialized in this field, then we tell you go and read a book written by Al Imam Tabari, one of the scholars of of history is Imam Al-Tabari. He has a huge book, Tariq Al-Umam Al-Muluk. It is called Tariq Al-Umam Al-Muluk, the history of the nations and kings. All the narrations there by the chain. So if you are a scholar of hadith, okay, or if you have a knowledge, strong knowledge in hadith, he said, go and read this book. But he said, for example, if you are not experienced in this field, Okay, then you can read by uh, a book called Al Bidai wa Nihaya, written by uh, Ibn Kathir, Rahimullah Ta'ala. Ibn Kathir, as you know, the scholar of Tafsir, who has the Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. Also, there is another book called Tariq al Islam, written by Al Dhabi. It is written by Al Dhabi. Uh, and he said, the best, the best book uh, wrote. The, about the information during that area, th that time, a book called Al Awasim Min Al Qawasim. Al Awasim Min Al Qawasim, written by a scholar called Ibn Al Arabi. Ibn Al Arabi. Okay, not Ibn Arabi. You have to be careful. There is a scholar called Ibn Al Arabi. Okay, this is what we mean here. And there is another one, Ibn Arabi, without Alif Lam. Ibn Arabi, he is a very bad man. He's a Sufi, his aqidah is very bad. Okay, we should be careful uh, from this uh, man. Also, uh, a book written by one of the scholars of Hadith, uh, uh, Ibn Sa'd, Tabaqat Ibn Sa'd. Also, the history written by uh, Khalifa, Ibn Khayyat, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Then he said, when you read the books of history, when you read the books of history, number one, you have to believe that the companions are the best generation, are the best people after the companions. We are mentioning this point many times because this is very important, very important point. You have to believe that the companions are the best generation. Be careful before reading any book of history, especially those who which talk about the problems happened. 
the, gen the generation of the companions are the best. This number one. Number two, also you have to believe that the companions are not angels. Okay, they do sense. Yes, they do sense. They have sense. Yes, they have sense. Okay, they are not perfect. Okay, but they uh, they they do uh, sense. Okay. The people of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah take from uh, يعني the main book in this issue is Al Tabari. Al Tabari is a huge book, wrote the uh, history by chains, every, every single narration with chains. So, if he said, Shaykh Atma Khamis. People of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah take from this book, and also the deviant people also take from this book. Uh, but what is the difference between Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah and the deviant sects? Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah use the book of Al Tabari, but they depend only on the authentic chains. While the deviant sects, they take any narration from that book without checking if, if it is authentic or not. Okay, now the next question. Why did the Imam al Tabari put the not authentic narrations in his book? Okay, yani, uh, this is a common question, not only for Imam al Tabari, also Abu Dawood, uh, Tirmidhi, um, uh, Nasai. Why did they put the, the not authentic ahadith in their book? Let's see what Imam al Tabari said. He said, You should know, the one who's reading my book. Uh, he said, I mentioned the hadith, okay, by the chain, uh, he said, what, what you find in my book about the history that you uh, that you don't like or you don't accept, okay, which you feel it is very bad. This is, he said, this is not because of me, but this is because of some of the narrators who convey the information. And my job is to convey the information as it came to me. Okay, so the meaning of his saying that what you f if you find something that you uh, you feel it is very strange okay this is uh, absolutely wrong he said don't accuse me but this is because of some of the narrators so i convey to you the information as it came to me and i mentioned the chain so you can make sure okay so the scholars of hadith and also like the scholars of history who mentioned the chains, he, he's saying here, my job is to give you all the narrations, the authentic and not authentic. And it is your job to differentiate between the authentic chain and not authentic chain. And sometimes, or not sometimes, it is very important for us to know the wrong narrations. If you remember, uh, uh, there is a hadith by uh, Hudayf ibn al-Yaman, radiyallahu ta'ala an. He said, people used to ask Rasulullah sallallahu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the good thing. Oh Rasulullah, uh, how can I reach for those? Oh Rasulullah, what are the things make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me? Yani he said the companions used to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about khair, about the good. But while I used to ask him what is about what is bad, why? He said to avoid it. For example, oh Rasulullah, what uh, put people in hellfire more? Uh, what is the worst thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hate? Okay. Why? He said. Avoid it. 
So we need to know the not authentic ahadith. Why? To warn the people. So imagine if there is a scholar and every time you ask him, oh Sheikh, what is the what about this hadith? And the Sheikh says, I don't know. What about this way of salah? I don't know. Okay, why? Because they are not authentic. So people will confuse. And the problem, some people use the not authentic hadith. Why? Until you prove for them it is not authentic. I mean, it is not enough for them to say, I don't know. Suppose that, uh, yani some, someone asked me last week, subhanAllah, about um, uh, a prayer. You pray and you recite in the first rak'ah, I think, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ had three times. And something you read something in the second rak'ah. Okay. So uh, I answer, Wallahi, yeah, for me, the first time, yani, I did not know any way of salah that the Prophet ﷺ repeated the same surah three times in one rak'ah. Yes, we, we know hadith, authentic hadith that the Prophet ﷺ repeated surah Ida Zulzila, the first rak'ah, and the second rak'ah, one time, one time. But repeating قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدِ Three times in the first rak'ah and you did something else in the second, in the first, in the second rak'ah, I don't know. So the, the, the person, yani, as if he considered that, it's okay. Because I said I don't know, so it's okay to practice this way of salah. No. I mentioned to that person, mainly there's a rule, the scholar said, الأصل في العبادات الحرمة. Okay, what is the foundation in any kind of worship is this is not allowed until you bring you bring a proof. Okay, so now it is not my problem because I don't know. No, it is your problem because you are practicing something without an authentic hadith. So, first of all, you should make sure that the hadith, if there is hadith or not. Then this hadith is authentic or not. Then you can uh, uh, practice this uh, way of salah according to the authentic hadith. But it is haram, it is not allowed, it is prohibited to practice any way of worship without making sure that the hadith is authentic. Yes, I'm talking about Tariq al-Umam al-Muluk. I mentioned the, the book of Al-Tabari is called Tariq al-Umam wal-Muluk. The history of the uh, nations and kings. Okay, but it is common to call it Tariq al-Tabari. Al you know, uh, like, like Tafsir ibn Kathir. Like Tafsir ibn Kathir. Okay, its name is not Tafsir ibn Kathir. Its name is Tafsir al-Quran al-Azim. The name... I mean, the, the, the actual name is Tafsir Al-Quran Al-Azim, the explanation of the great Quran. But it is common that it is called Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay, so we are, and the same thing, Tariq Al-Tabari. So I'm using the common word, and also the same thing, Tafsir Al-Sa'di. Tafsir Al-Sa'di, it is recently transla translated in 10 volumes, okay? Uh, but its name is not Tariq uh, Tafsir al-Sa'di, its name is Tafsir al-Kareem al-Rahman fi Tafsir Kalam al-Mannan. So this is the point. He mentioned uh, some, uh, something in, the, in this book, in Tariq al-Um al-Muluk or Tariq al-Tabari, he said, uh, al-Tabari mentioned a lot of narrations uh, or he, he used a lot of narrations by a, a man called Abu Mikhnaf, Lut ibn Yahya. Lut ibn Yahya. Specifically, in the issues of Saqif at Bani Sa'ida. Saqif at Bani Sa'ida, it means the place when the, the, the companions met, they met there in a place called Bani, Saqif at Bani Sa'ida to decide who is the Amir, who is the leader of the Muslim Ummah after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also another uh, incident when 
the six people chosen by Umar al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu met to decide who is the Khalifa after Umar al-Khattab and also about the killers of Uthman radiyallahu ta'ala an and who is the Khalifa after Uthman, the battle of Al-Jamal, the battle of Safin and Al-Tahkim, Al-Tahkim it means when Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala sent uh, Amr ibn al-As and Ali ibn Abi Talib sent Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and they, they had a meeting uh, and then the battle which is called Al-Nahrawan it is between Ali radiyallahu anhu and Khawarij then uh, when Muawiyah became the Khalifa and uh, the last thing the killing of Al-Husayn radiyallahu ta'ala he said subhanallah these uh, points in the history you'll f- most of the time you will find this name Abu Mikhnaf Abu Mikhnaf and you will f- you'll find many authors use the narrations of Abu Mikhnaf he said this Abu Mikhnaf is a deviant man and also he is a liar so he his narrations are not authentic subhanallah the problem many authors take i mean the authors who don't know the knowledge of hadith they take the narrations of from abu mukhnaf and he's as i mentioned he is a liar he is a liar okay and also not only abu mukhnaf there are other narrators like al waqidi Al-Waqidi, he is, we can say he's a scholar of Sirah. He's a scholar in the history, but he is not a good man in Hadith. I mean, if you see his name in the chain, then this chain is not authentic. And also a third man called Umar ibn Saif, Saif ibn Umar Tamimi. Saif ibn Umar Tamimi. You'll, يعني, if you find these names, uh, Abu Mikhnaf, Al-Waqidi, Saif ibn Umar Tamimi, and also we add Al-Kalbi, okay? These names are famous in the Seerah. But if you find their name in the narration, this narration is not authentic. I mean by itself. Okay? So it is very important to know these names when you are, if you are reading in Seerah. Okay? If you are reading in Seerah, be careful, be aware of these four names. Again, Lut ibn Yahya, Abu Mikhnaf. Number two, Saif ibn Umar al-Tamimi. Number three, Al-Waqidi. Number four, Al-Kalbi. طيب. Then he mentioned, Sheikh Uthman al-Khamis, what are the ways of the deviant people who try to change the history of the Muslim Ummah? طيب. Number one, they try to fabricate a story. They try to create a story. If you remember when we spoke about the fabricated hadith, hadith mawdu'. Why do people fabricate a hadith? Okay. One of them for the history. For the history. (laughs) Number two, how they try, how did they try to change the history? They take an authentic narration. But they add sometimes maybe they add one word in this narration. To spoil it, subhanallah. Okay, so sometimes he said they add only one word. Okay, or they delete or they remove one word. Like, yeah, for he mentioned, he gave an example. He said, like the meeting in the place called Saqifat Bani Sa'ida when they choose who is the Khalifa. Who's the leader after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Okay, he said uh, this narration is authentic. I mean, this story is authentic. But where is the problem? The problem you'll find some people added or they removed something from that story. This is number two. Number three, they use authentic narration, but they explain it in the wrong way. Maybe they take a hadith from Bukhari or from Muslim or from Imam Ahmed. It is authentic. It is maybe mutawatir. But they try to explain it in a different way to misguide the people. Number four. Now I'm talking about how, how they 
uh, how do they corrupt the history of the Muslims? Number four, and this is very important, number four. They try to magnify and focus on the mistakes of the companions. If you remember, we mentioned the generation of the companions is the best generation. You have to believe. You have to believe. Okay. The translation, Brother Anwar, uh, I'm not sure, Wallah, if the translation of Tariq, of Tariq Tabri is translated or not. Maybe some of the brothers can help, uh, can answer this question. Uh, so, number four, we mentioned that one of their ways, they will not add, they will not remove, they will not use odd ahadith or not authentic ahadith. They will not use fabricated ahadith, but they will pick the sins or the mistakes they will pick up the mistakes of the companions. As we said, the, compa the companions are the best people. And the second point we mentioned, they are not angels, they have mistakes. So you'll find some people, deviant people, try to pick up the mistakes of the companions. For example, if there, is, if there are thousand narrations, for example, there are th thousand narrations talk about Umar Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and 99% about the virtues of Umar Khattab and only 1% about a mistake from Umar Khattab. They will take this 1% and they put it under the microscope to make it a very big mistake. And they talk about this mistake and they explain, and they distribute. So people think that Umar al-Khattab is a bad man. Why? Because they talk only about this mistake. They will not mention the 99%. They talk only about, about the 1% mistake. We should be careful about this point because many deviant people use this point, okay? Specifically about Muawiyah, radiallahu ta'ala They will not mention that Muawiyah is a, a great companion. They will not mention that Muawiyah was writing the Quran for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or one of the people who were writing the Quran. Just they mention Muawiyah has this hadith, or they mention Muawiyah did that with with uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala or uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they f forget 40 years in Islam, and they mention only one incident. Okay, we should be careful. We should be careful. Number uh, five, they fabricate some letters. Okay, like uh, what happened at the time of the uh, Ali radiallahu radiallahu ta'ala an. Okay, they fabricate some letters to create the problem and to start the battle between Ali radiallahu ta'ala and Muawiyah. Also, one of the points, number six, they misguide people by using the names. He, he, he gave two examples. He said like Ibn Jarir, al tabari Okay? He said, the, he said like Ibn Jarir tabari there are two Ibn Jarir tabari The first one, the famous scholar, and his name, Muhammad Ibn Jarir, Ibn Yazid al-Tabari. He is one of the scholars of Al-Sunnah Jama'ah. And when we say Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, we mean this scholar. And there is another one, his name, Muhammad Ibn Jarir Ibn Rustum. Okay? He is a very bad man. He is one of the deviant scholars. So they, they misguide you. How? They say, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari said this or that. Okay, which Ibn Jarir? If we mention Ibn Jarir, we, we think about the first one. Immediately we think about the first one. Okay? No one will think about the second. But they say, no, no, we mean the second. They will not explain. They want to misguide people because people trust the first one. And the second one is a deviant, not authentic man. Uh, also, 
Sheikh Akbar Khamis gave another example of the names. He said uh, Ibn Hajar. Now, if I say Ibn Hajar, Ibn Hajar said, immediately I think Ibn Hajar, the famous scholar who explained Al Bukhari. Okay, while there is another Ibn Hajar. Okay, the one who explained Bukhari, his name Ahmed ibn Ali ibn Hajar al Asqalani from an area called Asqalan. There is another ibn Hajar, his name is Ahmed ibn Hajar al Haytami. Al Haytami. Okay, he's a scholar in fiqh, but he's not a scholar of hadith. Okay, so they sometimes they try to misguide people by saying Ibn Hajar mentioned this narration. Okay. People understand that Ibn Hajar one of the scholars of Hadith of the 9th century. Okay, no, they mean the other one. So, uh, this is called Tadlis. Tadlis, it means misguiding people. Okay, I mean something, but I show that he's another one. When the scholars, when did the scholar, the scholars start? to check the information. This is authentic and this is not authentic. He said, when uh, a problem happened, okay, Imam Ibn Sirin said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Ibn Sirin said, لم يكون يسألون عن الإسناد فلما وقعت فتنة قالوا سموا لنا رجالكم Ibn Sirin said, people did not use to ask about the, ch- the chain. You mentioned the information and I accept. Okay, but when people started misguiding the others, some people started to misguide people, then the scholars started to check. If you g- bring any information, from where? Who gave you this narration? And the one, who's your sheikh? And who's the sheikh of your sheikh? Okay, so people started to check the narrations. Why? Because the liars came out. Uh, Then the sheikh started uh, the book, briefly talk about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam born on Monday and uh, one of the opinions it is the 12th of Rabi'u al-Awwal but the Sheikh said this is not uh, يعني, uh, there are different opinions about the date of birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but definitely it is Monday it is Monday so Allah, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a guidance for the humanity. Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib, al Hashimi al Qurashi. And he born without a father. I mean, yani his father passed away when he was when his mother was pregnant, Amir ibn Tuhab. So the Prophet وسلم, grown as an orphan, uh, yatim. Also, his mother died later, what is famous that at the age of six, and after that, he went to his grandfather, Abu Talib. Again, his grandfather, Abu Talib, passed away uh, after that, maybe when his age was about eight years old. Uh, then he went to his uh, uncle, Abu Talib. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reached to the age 40, he became a prophet and messenger and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala told him to start the da'wah, telling people what is the right, what is and what is wrong. His people, I mean Quraysh, starting, started to fight him, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. His people started to fight him. Then he, uh, few people followed him from Mecca then they left Mecca to Medina, and this group migrated with him, the sincere, the pure people, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them As-Sadiqun, the truthfulness people, As-Sadiqun. 
للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون why, what is, why Sheikh Uthman Khamis is mentioning that because this is very important very important to know who are the companions before criticizing them you should know who are the companions so he mentioned the muhajirun okay it means the immigrants who went with the prophet sallallahu from mecca to medina they left their families and they left their wealth they left their houses their homes they did not care about their families they did not care about their their wealth and houses your uh, their family if you are muslims welcome you should migrate with with us you don't accept islam it's up to you it's up to you i'm giving you dawah i'm warning you if you are not listening ma'assalama so the muhajirun they are the best companions radiyallahu ta'ala oh yani i mean if you compare between the muhajirun or ansar muhajirun are better so they left their wealth behind them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they left and they went to al madina they are supporting the religion of islam and they are as sadiqun ulaikum as sadiqun and when they went there who were receiving them walladin al ansar walladin allah says in surah al hashr walladin tabaw al dar wal iman min qablihim يحبون من هاجر إليهم. They love the muhajirun. ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة وما يوقع شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون. So Allah named them as المفلحون. What does mean مفلحون? The winners. So المهاجرون they are الصادقون. صدق from the word truthfulness. المفلحون from الفلاح success. They are the winners. رضي الله تعالى عنهم. So when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم went to the Medina, he started the Muslim country, and he started then he started the jihad, fighting the kuffar. Then after twenty three years, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away, عليه الصلاة والسلام, and it was the biggest problem. For the or the biggest calamity for the Muslims. And the Prophet said in the hadith, إذا أصاب أحدكم مصيبة فليذكر مصيبته بي فإنها أعظم المصائب. If you have any calamity, he said صلى الله عليه وسلم, remember my death. Because my death is the biggest calamity. Is the greatest calamity. Subhanallah. The death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas radiallahu ta'ala an said, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered Medina, everything was enlightened. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, it was dark in Medina. عليه الصلاة والسلام. So uh, next chapter, Sheikh Uthman Khamis will talk about the uh, leader, uh, the, the Khalifa after Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم passed away. What happened? What did happen after that? How the Muslims choose? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an. Inshallah, we mention this next halqa. Allah alam next halqa will be from home or in the masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our masajid again. Okay, wallahi, yani also this is a musiba. This is a musiba, yani... But as we mentioned, the hadith, if you, if you have uh, any calamity, you should remember the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So any calamity, uh, any trial, 
كورونا closing the مساجد or any calamity okay we should remember the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu uh, the, sorry the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam طيب we take the second part of the hadith we are talking about the prophetic medicine okay let me bring the book don't leave please wait Come back. Inshallah, as total, I will not take more than one hour. Bismillah. Okay, there is an important point. Now, Alhamdulillah, there are thirteen people. But how can I make sure that they are watching? You are watching the lecture. Okay. Maybe some of you keep the Instagram on. And they are taking their breakfast. Okay. Maybe I should ask a question, and you should answer to make sure that you are watching the live. Then, inshallah, I trust you. خلاص. This is between you and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. طيب. Now I'll talk about the prophetic medicine. The prophetic medicine. I'm t- I'm taking the hadith from uh, Bukhari, inshallah. طيب. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. أما بعد. The third hadith. حديث أبو سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated that a man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم then he said oh رسول الله my brother complaining from diarrhea يشتكي بطنة okay he has a problem with his stomach the scholar said it means he has diarrhea the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said give him honey the man came the second time. The Prophet ﷺ said, give him honey. The man came the third time. The Prophet ﷺ said, give him honey. The fourth time, okay, the Prophet, uh, the man said, oh, Rasulullah, also he has problem with his stomach. Diarrhea, it means. Then the fourth time, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is telling the truth. And you, the, 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 the stomach of your brother or the abdomen of your brother is lying. Give him honey. Then after the fourth time, Abu Sa'id said, he gave him honey and he, he was cured. He was cured. طيب. This hadith talks about honey. And also we can say the way of using the honey. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, about the honey فيه شفاء للناس فيه شفاء للناس and also there is another point that subhanallah in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say honey يخرج من بطونها okay comes out from the stomach of the bees okay so some scholars said maybe honey and also the other things than honey yeah, now, subhanAllah, uh, if you go to the shops of honey, you'll find honey, you'll find propolis, you'll find uh, the royal jelly, you'll find, subhanAllah, uh, some kind of seeds. Okay, you find different things. Everything, all of them related to the bees. And subhanAllah, all of them are considered very powerful for the treatment. Tayyip. So, 
all, as I mentioned also last week, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Isqihi asalam. Give him honey. Which kind of honey? As we mentioned, yani, uh, not necessarily that it should be manok honey, it should be cedar, it should be acacia. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not mention a, spe- a specific type of honey. General. Give him honey. This is one point. Another point. I mentioned this last week and also emphasizing this point now. Isqihi. Okay, what is the meaning of isqihi? It means let him drink honey. Isqihi is related with something which can be drink, which can be drunk. Okay, isqihi. So you put the honey with water and you dissolve the honey in the water. Of course, you need warm water. Okay. Not hot water. Yani they say because subhanallah, the hot water uh, can uh, make the benefits of the honey less. Okay? So you need to put warm water. It is easy to dissolve it inside the warm water. Okay? Then drink it. It is very useful. Subhanallah. So uh, number one, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned honey. He did not specify any kind of honey. Number two, to drink it, not to eat it. Not to eat it by a spoon, but to drink it. Can you dr- eat it? Yes, you can. But it is more beneficial if you drink it. You dissolve it in, a, in water, in milk, uh, leaven. Uh, uh, use it with the juice. Okay, yani, uh, I like, and for example, if you go to, uh, for example, to buy a juice, okay, Tell the man to mix it with honey, not with sugar. Try your best to avoid the white sugar. And try your best to use the honey. They, especially nowadays, yani they, they, they say uh, corona, coronavirus, uh, yani how to fight coronavirus, you should uh, take the things which make your immunity stronger. Okay, so uh, it is good to use the uh, honey. As I said, nowadays, yani the, the, yani try to take the things which make your immunity stronger. And also, one of the things which make your immunity stronger, your heart, your way of thinking. Okay? Yani it means if, you have, if your faith is strong, then inshallah your immunity will be strong. But if you scare what will happen, coronavirus, I will die, uh, the world will finish, okay? then uh, the shaitan will defeat you. And of course, your faith, when your faith is weaker, your immunity will be weaker, your body will be weaker. And there is a, subhanallah, uh, again I'm coming to corona. Well, I, it is strange, some people talk about the year 2020 is a bad year. This is haram. These brothers, sisters, we are Muslims, wake up. What is the relationship between this year and what is happening? If there is a wind, if there is a rain, if there is a virus, if there is a war, it is not allowed, haram, to say, wallahi, it is a bad year, or it is a bad day, a black day, like like some Kuwaitis, they call uh, the 2nd uh, of August, the Black Thursday. This is haram. Because you know the Iraqi invasion. This is haram. You should not connect the things happen with the with the days. Everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the problem of Thursday or Friday or Saturday? What is the problem with the year 2020 or 2021? We don't know what will happen next year. Allah will what will happen. Of course, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. But we don't know what will happen. Okay? So please, brothers and sisters, no need to say, Wallahi, this is a bad year. Okay? Uh, or, uh, the, yani, shu'um, uh, wattiyara, superstition. No, this is haram. This is haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, La adwa wa la tiyara. لا عدوى ولا طيرة ولا هامة ولا صفر وفر من مجدوف يرارك من الأسد. Okay, 
if we need inshallah later to explain this hadith but in this hadith la, la, la adwa wa la tiyara okay also it is good to explain the first part the first one what does it mean la adwa la adwa it means the virus the disease cannot transmit from one person to another person by itself in the jahiliya okay i mean before islam people used people believe that the diseases can transmit they can, the disease can go from one person to another person this is sure so the prophet sallallahu alaihi said no la adwa it means there is no infection from one person to another person by your understanding this happens but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah wills subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah doesn't will this will not happen and alhamdulillah we can see this yani for example if there is uh, in the school in the kg kg1 kg2 or pre kg nursery okay in the class there are 20 students or 25 students you notice that one student has for example chicken box after one week not all the kids got the disease why because the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the belief of jahiliyyah i mean the pre islamic era all the kids should have the disease but this is not the fact this is not the reality so it means everything by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so uh, we should not believe that this year has bad things and it causes bad things no everything from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah's testing his slaves the believers and punishing the kuffar who don't believe in him subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said asqihi asalan so number one he did not specify honey number two it is good to drink the honey not to eat uh, number number three repeat take taking the honey as i mentioned honey we should we should deal with it like the medicine like the antibiotic okay i mean if you are sick okay i want my immunity to be stronger خلاص every day in the morning i will take one spoon of honey maybe 15 grams this is not enough this is not enough i mean if you are sick to strengthen your immunity you need maybe to take every day uh, 60 or 70 grams and uh, as i mentioned last week uh, one of the physicians mentioned that you should take if you are sick from 150 to 200 grams a day Okay, so maybe you need three, four spoons every day. Uh, so this is one of the things. And also, from the hadith, we understand that honey needs time to work. It depends maybe on the kind of disease. Maybe the disease has, uh, it is strong, so you need maybe four days the disease is not strong maybe two days uh, it is very serious disease maybe you need seven seven days it is a medicine or you should deal it like a medicine if you are sick okay uh, sorry so yani, even the antibiotics some of them you need two weeks antifungal we need sometimes six months for some some kinds of treatment we need maybe six months up to one year so why people subhanallah for the honey they say i i'm take i'm taking honey and it is not working okay you are taking honey very small amount few days you need to to take that about this hadith notice that the prophet sallallahu uh, the uh, the man came telling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that my brother is complaining that he has diarrhea the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said give him honey he came the second the third the fourth it means 
this man has a belief that I should ask the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The man did not say, Khalas, I asked him the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the first time and it did not work, I should search for another one. No. This companion believes that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is guiding me. But I should ask him. Maybe there is something wrong with my way. He gave him the, the same answer the second, the third. And the man came to the Prophet Sallallahu as I said, the first, the second, the third, the fourth. So the point is here, you have to believe that Quran is true. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu our messenger Muhammad, he is telling the truth. Where are people? We are only nine. Okay. One person, I need one person more. No problem. I will finish, inshallah. So, the point here the faith is very important. When you apply the Sharia, you should apply the Sharia with full Iman. Okay. The, the same thing in medicine. I mean, the doctors say you should have a good psychology. You should believe that this is, inshallah, useful for you. But for example, you believe, wallahi, uh, doctors are wasting our time. They are not, um, they don't know anything in medicine. Okay, I will take the antibiotic. Uh, okay, I will take this medicine. I will do this surgery. It is not useful. Without belief, without belief, this is very, very bad. You should believe, inshallah, this is useful. When I go to a doctor who is qu highly qualified and inshallah, he's a good Muslim, okay? So he's telling me to do this and that for my disease. Inshallah, if I follow his advice, I will get the cure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the belief is very important. Tayyib. I'll stop here, inshallah. If you have questions, brothers and sisters, please, if you have a question, you can send your question. Today is 14. No questions? We can start the breakfast. Any question, brothers, sisters? You mentioned about two Ibn Jarir. Yes. The, the yes, the the famous Ibn Jarir, the great scholar Ibn Jarir. His name Muhammad Ibn Jarir. Uh, Muhammad ibn Jarir ibn Yazid. Muhammad ibn Jarir ibn Yazid. And the other one, Muhammad ibn Jarir ibn Rustum. This is the bad one, the deviant uh, man. Okay? MashaAllah, it is raining. Allahumma sayyib al nafi'an. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the, this rain to clean the, the world, to clean Kuwait from the virus, from the diseases. Allahumma sayyib al nafi'an. Okay. No question, khalas? Can we start the breakfast or do you have any question? طيب خلاص اوكي امين جزاكم الله خير برذر سيسترز اند ان شاء الله از اي بروميس اي هاف اللي هو فيو بوينتس ريجاردينغ تو برينغ ات هوم اوكي ابوت ذا جماعه is it wajib or not? Should we give the adhan or not? And also the iqama. 
uh, can the sisters, I mean, can the females do the adhan or not? Is it allowed for them to do the adhan or not? Who, who should lead the salah? Yani, yani for example, uh, maybe your son has more Quran than you. Maybe uh, you don't know uh, the Arabic language and your son is speaking Arabic, uh, fluent Arabic, and he memorizes the Quran, maybe three, four, five Jews, who should, and your son is seven years old or eight years old, and you are 50 years old, who should lead the Salah? Okay, and uh, can your wife lead the Salah? For example, your wife is Alima, and you are uh, you are not alim, okay? You are one of the general Muslims, okay? Can your wife lead you in the salah or not? If she said, I should lead the salah because I am alima and I memorize the full Quran, and you don't even memorize Juz Amma, can she lead the salah or not? Of course, she cannot lead the salah, okay? طيب. Inshallah, inshallah, I will answer uh, these questions, not now, طيب. later, uh, because I want to put all of them together, okay, uh, under the title, the rules of ja the jama'ah inside the house, inshallah. But please, uh, يعني, uh, brothers, okay, don't try to break the rules of the government. يعني yesterday, the government said the masjid should be closed. Some of them went to the masjid and they prayed in the masjid. They opened the masjid and they prayed the masjid. I, I'm not sure if this by force or the imam told them, come, we should not care about them. This is wrong. Please, don't do this. Okay? Yani, even even if you, if you believe this is a wrong decision, okay, don't break the rules. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, okay, أَدُّوا إِلَيْهِمْ حَقَّهُمْ وَسَلُّ اللَّهِ حَقَّكُمْ Okay, if the rulers are oppressors, they are not giving you your rights, so ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala your right. Do your job toward them and ask Allah your right. I mean, if you believe, if you believe this is wrong decision, okay, but don't break rules. Pray at home and Allah will give you the reward of the masjid, okay? But to create a problem, maybe later uh, you open a masjid, maybe you fight with the imam, and then or the imam tells the people come to the masjid, will not care about the, the government, then another masjid will open, then the police come and there will, uh, there, there will be a big fight. No, this is haram in Islam. Please, we are not in a situation to fight. Follow the regulations of the government until we finish this problem, and inshallah, this uh, problem uh, passes safely without losing our uh, any one of our brothers or sisters. طيب. Uh, and inshallah, Allah will reward you. Zakumullah khair. طيب. Any question regarding our uh, topic? Nothing. We go to breakfast. خلاص. جزاكم الله خيرا. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.